Hey guys, welcome to Throwback Thursday on Supercars of London. This week we're not going to be throwing that far back, we're going to be throwing back about six months to when I first picked up my car. And the reason that we're doing this is because my car is currently silver and not too far away from going baby blue. So I thought that I would sneak this episode in whilst the car is silver, which is exactly the same as when I picked the car up in this exact location. I've also got a cool bit of technology as well, which I'll show you in a bit. A lot of you are going to be pleased with that. And we're going to look back at what it was like picking up the Audi R8 and also going on my first drive. But we're going to go on it again um, now with that car, with that little bit of technology um, that is just currently sitting in my car. So let's check it out. Right, if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you may have seen my upload earlier on in the day. But this bit of uh, kit, bit of technology, is what is going to um, keep you on my dash whilst I'm driving. So no more swinging around roundabouts and you flying off my dashboard. This is what you've all been waiting for for probably six months since I bought the car and my um, camera has been incapable of staying on my dashboard in one place. So the idea of this Throwback Thursday is to take a look back at the first day that I picked my my car up and the first ever drive that I took in the Audi R8 and then I'm going to do exactly the same in this car talking to you about what happened what I was feeling when I picked it up was I scared was I nervous was I excited all of those emotions that unfortunately because I was just um, so dazed out that I was picking up an Audi R8 that I didn't show on camera so um, check out what happened when I picked up my Audi R8 and the first drive I put a lot of pressure on me as well because I know that there's gonna be a lot of people watching so um Let's start the V8 up and um, let's go. So you can hear the V8. Into first gear. Seatbelt on. <laughs> Safety first, guys. Handbrake off. <laughs> I've, I've stalled it. Try not to stall it this time. Here we go. The first couple of yards driving um, an Audi R8 into second gear. And it feels quite easy to drive. Um, I don't know whether you can tell, but I'm shaking. Um, the heart is racing. And uh, it feels weird if nothing like I've ever driven before and I haven't even gone over 15 miles an hour. I'm gonna put the window down for you guys to uh, hear the sound of the R8 as we go under here. <laughs> that is... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna come across like a 12 year old kid on YouTube, but that was cool as I'm trying to relax myself, see if you can see how much I'm shaking. So we've driven about two miles. We've actually gone down 10 miles in terms of fuel. Um, hold on a minute. Have we taken the SB race engineering okay. number plate? <laughs> Oh, well, we've, I was so excited about taking off, I've actually left the SB race engineering number plate on the rear of the car. <laughs> so we're driving around with no number plate on the back. I'm going to have to pull over. Which one <laughs> number plate? <laughs> Cannot believe that we left this SB race Ooh. on the back. So as you can see, there was a massive smile on my face, as I'm sure um, a lot of you are aware. Um, and like anyone else that was picking up an Audi R8 for the first time, a massive smile on their face. So I'm gonna show you what this bit of technology does now as I put it um, on my dashboard and then put you there, there. Right. So firstly, when I was sat in my car for the first time about to um, start it up with the key, where's my key? 
I didn't actually know how to start the car up. I'd um, started up a few cars in the past and that was putting your foot on the brake pedal and turning the key in the ignition. And when I worked at HRO and at Ferrari, there was normally a big fat red button that said press to start, which is like most modern Ferraris. However, when I started this car up, I was having my foot on the brake, trying to uh, flick the keys round and absolutely nothing was happening. Look, I'm doing it now. Hold on two secs, I'm just turning the music down. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off. So I've got my foot on the brake and nothing happened. So I was getting quite worried to begin with that I'd bought a broken car and uh, couldn't drive it straight away. So um, again, I tried turning it like that, nothing. And then I decided to try and put my foot on the clutch and it started. So um, that shows how inexperienced I was to driving any sort of car uh, like this. And I hadn't even driven an Audi R8 to the point until I bought the car. And then the first drive was uh, the first time I'd ever driven an Audi R8. So it was quite daunting. I was quite nervous. The fact that the car's a lot wider than my Vauxhall Astra and um, it's a lot powerful, a lot more powerful as well. So first things first, put your seatbelt on. What I didn't do in the first video was um, worry about my seatbelt. There were so many thoughts going through my head that I just, just my my brain wasn't functioning properly. All I wanted to do was get to, used to this car, get to grips with it, and um, move away as smoothly as possible. But what happened? I stalled it. So now I'm gonna put it in first gear. You've actually seen me stall quite a few times, but I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to pull away without stalling. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that the valves are off so that I can continue talking to you. They're off. So here we go. So moving away um, a lot more smoothly than I did when I first drove. And if you can see from the surroundings, we've got the old abandoned um, old people's home that I'm going to be spending a night here for Halloween, a Halloween Supercars of London special. I'm gonna spend the night outside there in my car as a Living With A Supercar special edition. Um, I'm not so looking forward to that, but hopefully we'll be able to conclude whether that house is haunted. So as I came out onto the first public road that I knew was gonna have cars on, I was quite nervous driving, um, noticeably how low you are to the ground, but also how wide the car is. And I knew that there was a camera here filming my first drive, uh, so I knew that I had to sort of talk to the camera, but at the same time, I was so focused on uh, what was happening in front of me and everything around, I literally felt like I was on my f driving test again, when you're having to check your mirrors every six seconds. And it's just, I mean, it's a daunting experience driving a car that's got this much power. Um, however, it's very, very easy to drive at slow uh, miles an hour. So it wasn't too bad. And then as I was coming around here, this road is very quiet. So as you've seen, we haven't actually come across any cars, but once we get to this roundabout, it becomes um, a bit of a main road. And as where we are in Hertfordshire, there's also a school down here. So the, mar the um, speed limit is only 20 miles an hour. Here we go, we're going past the school now. Lots of cars, more on that side actually, which you can't see, unfortunately. And lots of parents and a lollipop man as well. But I'm gonna go straight across the zebra crossing. Lovely. And yep, lots of mums and dads looking. And that was the first thing that really noticed, uh, really caught my eye when I was driving this car, is how many people actually notice the car driving. It is low, it obviously looks amazing. Um, but because I was actually sitting behind it and but I'd been filming supercars for six years or so, I was used to just looking at the cars, but then actually sitting in the driver's seat of a Audi R8, you completely forget that you're set in the car. Um, and then everyone else is looking from around and you're just like, why are you looking at me? So in the video, I came round to uh, this little underpass here. And I think I was in fourth gear, but it was the first time that I put my foot down and I'll do it again. That was a really tame acceleration. However, I didn't put my foot down there, but when I first picked my car up, that was the first time that I really put my foot down. I was in fourth gear, so there wasn't actually that much power um, coming into the car, which is probably a safe thing, as um, a secret that I only found out when I finished filming was when I actually picked the car up and started moving away, stalled it, you know, literally the first 10 minutes of me driving this car for the first time, 
I had the traction control off, which I didn't realise. So luckily, I didn't put my foot down in stupid places like going around a roundabout or anything like that, or I would have ended up in a bush. But that was one thing that really sort of scared me afterwards. I was actually driving the whole way home with the traction control off. It's got the little um, symbol. Obviously, it's not all gone now because I've got the traction control on, but when I was driving, it had the symbol lit up, but I just thought that meant that the traction control was on. So that's how much I knew about the cars. What I was going to say was I hope that you're one, aware, and two, appreciative of the fact that I've got this new um, grippy mat that is holding uh, the camera so steady. Look, you would have been right off the dashboard and then I can put my foot down as well. And then put my foot on the brake. And you're still there in the same place. The camera is still pointing at me. I mean, it's bad for you, but for me, it makes for a lot better video. I'm gonna sign off from Throwback Thursday as I go through the speed camera at 30 miles an hour, because I haven't got the SB race engineering plates on. And then accelerate to 31. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this sort of, quite a recent throwback really, but um, it was one that I wanted to do whilst my car was still silver, and it sort of uh, mirrored what my car looked like when I picked it up and it was also important for you uh, to uh, know what I was feeling when I picked the car up because I was really really nervous really nervous I do you know what so people ask me like ask me whether I was excited about picking the car up and I never said that I was excited and I think um, it was good that I wasn't excited because if I was then I probably would have crashed it um, in all honesty because I've had some moments with this car where it's uh, reacting in a way that I wasn't expecting it to react normally around a roundabout and things like that. And it's definitely caught me off guard and sometimes in the wet as well, which is um, doubly as scary. Um, but I'm learning. I've had the car for six months. I'm learning. Um, and it, it's just a fun learning curve being able to just have that sound behind me. The valves are still shut, but it's in the humming mode. It's in the F1 hub. Perfect to say uh, thank you for watching. Next week we'll resume as normal with some of the older stuff from the Supercars of London um, library or video archive, archive as I like to say. And um, there we go. That is uh, what I was feeling when I was driving the Audi R8 for the first time on the day that I picked it up, which um, was definitely, definitely an experience I will not forget. So now I'm gonna head back home, edit this video for you guys to watch tonight, and I hope that you enjoyed the um, prank war that me and my friend have had. And um, we are, well, at the moment, I'm sure he's gonna be watching this, but I'm plotting another prank because um, he sort of beat me on that one. So I'm planning something else, I'm planning. This Saturday as well, living with a supercar, the running costs of the Audi R8 is going live as well. So make sure that you tune in for that because that is uh, quite interesting actually when um, I start working out how much it costs to run this car. Look at that, I'm going round a roundabout and you're staying there. Lots more videos to come with the sticky mat. Cheers guys.